Welcome to West of Tulsa, everybody. I'm CJ Ward, and this is Studio Three, right? I yes. forgot. Yes, hasn't, hasn't changed. Jacket, hasn't Studio changed. Three in Ventura, <laughs> California. We have a full house again. We got Dan at the controls. He's so he's in charge. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. We got Gabe. Yo. We got Beth. We got the helm. How you doing? And we got Kyle Wortham and Joe Kennelty are joining us today. Thank you. Now, this isn't just a regular guest. This guy flew in from Orlando. To get here, we really appreciate you coming in and joining us in studio. Definitely right. win the prize. I you win the prize. Yeah, uh, farthest yeah. traveled, I hope. Yeah, yeah sure. So, well, and not just that, too, but that your, a couple of your flights were canceled. You went through this whole nightmare just to get here. It but was you a made hard it. day yesterday, and I was saying, telling Joe that my wife was flying the other way across the nation, and I was flying west, and she was flying east uh, from Taiwan. We oh, passed oh, each other in the air oh my yesterday. Gosh. But yeah, but I landed at John Wayne at about 11 o'clock last night. Try to get a rental car. Too late. Uh-huh. Anyway, I'm here. It's great. You have a fantastic uh, studio here, and I'm super excited to, to so, talk. So if you fall asleep, I just give you a nudge. Yeah, yeah, that do that. <laughs> right give okay. me a nudge. Give me a kick under the Okay, <laughs> okay. All right, we'll do that. All right. And Joe, thank you for coming in. Now, you're you're local here in yep. the Ventura area. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know Dan through a friend of a friend, and uh, yes. they put us together at a, a pool party because they're like, hey, you like cameras? He likes cameras. And <laughs> two two hours later, we're still talking. At the oh, party, nerding so. out. <laughs> cameras and motor. So, we were just talking motocross, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so, right. You did motocross, Dan, right? Yeah, yeah Joe, I, I, I did know. motocross, and Joe's, Joe's a motorcycle guy. So, I, yeah. I can tell by your Instagram feed, you yeah. do a lot of Beautiful. riding. Yeah, that's I'm a cool. big nerd with my old bikes, man. That's cool. Yeah. But old Honda, right? Yeah, I got a 78 XL 250 and a 75 XL 350. Oh, good. Uh-huh. And the uh, the 250 was one that was given to me in pieces right before the pandemic. And I had given away my bikes when I had a kid. So it had been like eight years since I'd ridden. And I was like, well... Let's let's put this thing together and see what happens. A fun and, project. Yeah. 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 And you're into photography, videography, yep. a little bit of all that. Yeah, yeah. Photos, videos, uh, drawing, painting, all that fun stuff. All I'm right. just creative and that's what I do. And Kyle, your truck rodeo. We all agree that's one of the coolest names it's we've a heard. Great, oh, yeah. great name. It, yes. We love it. So we're fans. Instantly, the second I heard the name, I was a fan. Tell us about Truck Rodeo. Right. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Truck Rodeo is the first branded marketplace for classic pickup trucks. Um, the way I think about it is it's sort of like what Bring a Trailer would be if they had a cowboy accent a little bit. Right? <laughs> so, uh, we're having some fun, and we're, we're uh, building community on Instagram. We just hit 35,000 followers yesterday and sort of oh. doing things a little bit different, but taking the trucks that are usually buried in Marketplace or in other some of the big auction sites, they're buried behind the Maseratis and mini bikes, and bringing them to life a little bit giving them their due right and i told joe uh truck rodeo is sort of the ad agency for old classic pickup trucks yeah. Yeah. how long have yeah. you been doing this so we've been doing this about a year so joe and i met about this time last year where we were starting to create content for truck rodeo right just thinking outside of the box a little bit and putting some tasty eye candy together to help grow community and just bring the, these trucks to life some so yeah we've been doing it about a year and we probably have done i don't know seven or eight shoots uh some trucks some uh farm equipment as well for some other gigs and things like that but joe is amazing content creator and and i reached out to him as well because of his loves and those old xls and the hondas and the videos i saw him putting together and thought that would work well for my vision for truck rodeo but you guys didn't meet in person you guys met over instagram Instagram? yeah wow yeah Yeah, exactly that's what i was saying earlier Uh, instagram is the new linkedin yeah Yeah. totally Yeah. yeah just me making you know nerdy videos of my bike and me and uh and then it turned into something that he liked. And so, Kyle, would you have not never considered, it, you know, him with if he wasn't into cars and trucks and bikes and stuff like that? Yeah, no, absolutely. I saw what he was doing. His content had attitude. It was an old, you know, enduro bike that you know gave it a lot of uh, power and impact. The content was great. So that's why I reached out. Uh, certainly, it helps to work with people who know what they're talking about, right? Uh, I've you know been in sort of marketing for the last 25 years or so. And there's lots of people who, you know, fake it till they make it and you can uh, pick that up a little bit. But no, Joe's got an amazing understanding for uh, cars, for bikes, and, and to the point where you can go into a shoot and he gets it, he knows what to shoot for, what we're getting, uh, what that, you know, uh, how hot that engine is getting as this guy is waiting around to get shot, right? And sort of, you know, uh, how this is all coming together. So he gets it, and it's great to work with uh, with him. We've done some really cool things together, too. And you got you got the eye for the marketing. because You kind of just touched on it, but you have a marketing background. Give us a little bit of background because this is important. 
uh, and how you came up with the name Truck Rodeo and how you spotted Joe. And so talk about it a little bit. Yeah, um, my background is I was in corporate America doing marketing for some old brands like uh, some old beer brands, actually. So I worked, was the marketing director for Paps uh, Brewing Company for some time. And I helped bring back some old beers like Schlitz, some old oh, bad I beers, Schlitz, uh -huh. PBR, yeah. uh, Lone Star was one of those. So I, I did the, uh, the beer circuit for a while. I also worked on Blue Moon Beer, uh, Mike's Hair Lemonade as well, uh, Project White Claw. Mm. Uh, wow. which you may have heard of. But uh, yeah, so I, I came up and cut my teeth through the beer world, also through a little bit of Philip Morris world back in the day in the 90s, right? So uh, going on these sort of epic photo shoots of uh, big sky country in Mexico and, and in Utah. And sort of that's when I thought about truck rodeo, sort of bringing that sort of frontier back. But yeah, uh, truck rodeo, the name came from a little bit out of the, the opening scene of Smoking the Bandit. If you remember, uh, Big Ennis and, and Lil Ennis are going to talk to the bandit and he is hanging in his hammock there. Uh, the event they're at is actually a truck rodeo. And so there are big semi rigs rolling around that oval track uh, at Atlanta Speedway, I believe. So anyway, uh, truck rodeo was born out of that just to sort of, you know, we're not taking ourselves too seriously, but there's a little bit of wink, wink, nudge, nudge there. Some. <laughs> so, yeah. I love it. Yeah. And the second I heard it, I thought, wow, this is a great name. Yeah, it's definitely. a great name. Yeah. Kyle's a wordsmith, man. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh, some of the stuff you come up with for these like little campaign stuff that we do. It's like the words. I, I'm, I'm a picture guy. I can't, Visual, I can't yeah. do words for anything, but yeah. Well, so, and that's why you put the two of you together. Yeah. It's a nice mix. Yeah, a little bit. Like, I mean, one of the things, uh, he, when I met Joe, he's super Porsche guy. You know, like, and I don't know anything about Porsches except Southern California. California is ground zero for cool Porsches, right? <laughs> uh, but I'm from the Midwest, from Chicago, and, you know, we don't even drive on the roads when it's not salt on the roads, right? So uh, we don't have as much drive time as you do. But Joe was super into Ferraris and, like, Porsches and, and supercars. And I was like, hey, I need you to shoot an old 1972 <laughs> C10 Chevrolet. And he's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, but it I needed to do it in the way you would shoot a Ferrari, right? Yeah. And that was a little bit of how this was born, quite frankly. It's like uh, truck radio as a whole is like, well, all the auction sites are putting the Ferraris as supercars in the 30 pages b before the trucks. Mm. Why don't we give them the same features? And so to that point, you know, we were having fun about that. But some of the word stuff and, and language, we we're having fun with campaigns. You know, one of the things we were thinking about for T-shirts is, you know, uh, truck rodeo, if you're driving shoes or cowboy boots. <laughs> 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 you know, stuff like that. So... We're having fun with. We get some bumper stickers as well, and things that say like, uh, "You haven't seen so many trucks in one place since uh, Gillies, you know, back in the urban cowboy <laughs> days, and things like that." But no, it's fun. It's fun. Wait. I grew up with trucks. Our neighbor had. He was a butcher, and he had one of these big old. I want to say Ford, yeah. and it was the two-tone, right? It was yellow with brown. And I just remember as a little kid getting up in the bench seat with his daughter, and that bench seat was like from there to there. <laughs> massive, huge trucks. Yep. And then another guy who had an old, and I'm sorry, I don't know what era, was probably 60s with the bubble kind of bubble rooftop, right? And all of us kids in the neighborhood, about 12 of us would jump in the back of the pickup That's part, cool. take us to get ice cream. And he would do, so we just grew up with trucks. Yeah. And I know you did in a different way on your grandparents' farm. On the farm in Pennsylvania. Yeah, mm -hmm. we were always in a truck. A truck or a Chevy Caprice or something something along those lines. It was a truck. Because that's how you got around. And what was that truck? I'm curious because, again, a lot of people, and that's one of the questions I had for you, is what is your first memory of a truck, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know exactly which model it was, but I know my grandfather was huge into Chevys. Yeah. So it was a Chevy truck. I can right. tell you exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. It was a Chevy truck, Chevy Caprice. It was a Chevy, Chevy, Chevy. He must have known the salesman or something. Right. He was an insurance salesman, so he probably insured Chevy. <laughs> <for> all I know. <laughs> That's how we ended up in a Chevy all the time. I was telling Joe, so uh, I grew up in a small town, Missouri, right? And my old man was a farmer and he was a geologist as well. So he was geologist first and he would side hustle farm on the side, right? That's that's a hard that's a hard side hustle. But his daily driver was 1968 Chevrolet C10 pickup. And it was white. And like I said, he's a little bit of cowboys, cowboy boots, cowboy hat. Never saw him with lace shoes ever in my life, quite frankly. And he used to chew red man tobacco mm -hmm. that came in a pouch, right? And so he had this white truck and he'd spit the red man out the side of his window, the uh, left side there. And he had this just <laughs> flare tobacco spit that would start the wing window <laughs> all the way to jail. Right? And everyone in county knew, oh. you know, that was Jim Worthen coming over. That's a redneck picture. Yeah, exactly. So I take a little pride in that. So, right. So the redneck quotient of that mixed with Joe's stuff is sort of how Truck Road well, was I think born. That's what's interesting about um, the videos that you guys are producing, the content you guys produce, is that you're creating this feeling as if you didn't grow up in a, a farm or you feed and grew up in the Midwest or, uh, you know, with a truck. You like, you get the sense of, 
this is what it was like to have this truck back in the day, but you know, now 2024, you know, so that's why I feel it's very genius about the branding. It's like you're treating it like a supercar, but it's definitely, you're not, you know, it's not a supercar. It's a, it's a truck, you know, and it's, uh, you said it's pre 97, pre 97. Yeah. So oh, pre, pre smog in, in oh, California okay. is a good cutoff for that. Yeah. yeah. No, you're exactly right. And thanks for picking that up. And that's the idea behind it is, and when we talk about our content strategy, which we have, like, how do we grow this community? Because, what I've learned in business and and also being around other auction companies as of late is that it's really difficult to build a community, but once you get there, it's easy to scale, right? And so we put a lot of thought strategy into how do we build that community and providing that experience. So when we talk about our content budgets going into this, that is one exactly like ownership experience. Mm -hmm. And and with truck radio, there's varying degrees of product quality, right? Like trucks I know and that I drive and I got a 72 Ford F100. It's a good, you know, $5,000 truck I bought five years ago when you could find them. But if I take it to brunch, I'm just going to smell like gas when I get out, <laughs> right? And the wing windows don't open right. But that's part of the charm too, right? Yeah. But a Merle Haggard tape sounds best in that yeah. truck. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but to that point, there's other trucks out there that are, you know, $25,000 truck right now is, you know, minimum to get something you could be proud of. And a $50,000 truck is a turnkey truck uh, that you don't have to be worried about. Uh, and like I said, they're out there, but there's not the content around that to bring them to life, right? Yeah. It's still the old photos. And, you know, one of the things we're going to have some fun with when we, uh, when we do our soft launch in June with the website is the photos we get have to be epic, right? And we're going to go out and get those photos, mm -hmm. but also no wet garden hoses in the back, no the patios that are broken down in the back are old Rottweiler tied <laughs> yeah. to a stake, you know, that stuff kills no me. You have a $50,000 truck there and you have an old patio breaking down in the background. Of, yeah. Like take some great pics. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you, what is one of the big challenges for you depicting in, in kind of this resurgence also the love of a truck, an old truck and these really modern, beautiful, they're like driving around in the living room, the, yeah. I think. They're time capsules. I mean, yeah. I think, uh, so my first car was a 69 Cadillac Coupe de Ville and <laughs> <That's> I, <a, laughs> I bought it when I was 15 and a half um, with my own money, worked doing concrete for two summers and uh, this kid had like two weeks to sell the car. And his mom gave an ultimatum because he was facing like juvie time and so, so anyways i offered him 650 bucks and he said no and then a, the last day came down <laughs> to like get rid of the car his mom was going to donate it and so he took the money and i had the car and uh so my love for old cars started right then i didn't even know what it was at the time i had a 472 stock and then i boarded out to 501 with a <laughs> b &M shift kit and flow wow. master exhaust but that's where my love for old things started and, uh, you know, it carried on into the old bikes that I got. And then when Kyle hit me up, it's like, I, I've always been a truck guy, but not necessarily an old truck guy. And now I'm purely You're so addicted. Old, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I so, can't stop seeing them everywhere. I mean, we were just at, you know, toppers up in the uh, transmission brewery and, like, kept seeing trucks drive by. <laughs> Kyle and I are like, oh, look at that one, look at that one. Yeah. And uh, it's just, uh, I, I, uh, I know what that passion is that these guys have for the trucks. Same thing I had for the car or the bikes. It's all the same kind of thing. And so I know how to kind of tap into that with, with the eye, you know, the creative eye and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's been a, been a fun journey and now I'm constantly wanting a truck. It's just the prices on these things are starting to go up and yeah. it's, it's pretty wild. You know, you know, coming from, uh, uh Paps and the, those companies that you worked with before, I remember when I was, uh, a kid, if you drank Paps or Schlitz, you were a broke dick. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you didn't associate with those guys. Those yeah. other side yeah. of the tracks kind of guys. And then I don't know what it was, maybe 10, 15 years ago, it started to be like these young guys are wearing a PBR shirt. I'm like, why are you wearing that shirt, dude? But it became this thing. It's like, oh, it's it's a throwback or whatever, you know. And mm -hmm. I know I'm sure you guys sold swag more than anything else, yeah. right? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good point. And so I learned a whole lot from that. And what you're talking about, that resurgence of Paps and those old dad beers came along. I was at Paps during that time. I was hired to to resurrect those old beers, and it was a lot of fun. It helped me sort of understand how to work and be clever with no budget because Paps is a yeah. big beer yeah. and there's not a big marketing budget there, right? Uh, but you're right. Um, so yeah, a lot of fun out of that. And we did some fun things like that. You know, I was one of the guys who brought back Lone Star beer and Primo beer, which is an old Hawaii beer back in the day. Mm -hmm. But how do you adapt those? So, you know, I learned a lot from uh, having to work with a shoestring budget and trying to be clever on some things, right? And so we do that with some things we're working on too. Um, in fact, like again, growing community, we had followed a, uh, amazing 
orange Ford F100 4x4 from uh, Massachusetts. It was mm. put together by a shop called Northeast Muscle Cars. It went through Barrett Jackson. It sold for $170,000. Oh. Yeah, oh, wow. so it's crazy, right? So we followed that to its new owner in Utah. And I called Joe and said, I think I can make this happen. We're gonna go get this, guy, get this guy and shoot this amazing truck. And so I reached out to him on the new LinkedIn, Instagram. And <laughs> <laughs> he got back to me and said, yeah, I actually been following you on truck radio. I know what you're doing, uh, totally makes sense. And so we talked to him and he had, he has an extensive collection, but some of the things we talked about, about the nostalgia. So his trucks he has, he's probably, I think he has probably eight or, seven or eight probably yeah i'd say you know it's uh definitely um almost a million dollars of trucks there mm. um but same thing all lineage from his father the he has a 1979 f-150 uh, that his father bought brand new from a las vegas dealership uh, he had worked the dealership uh early on had, at a summer job had gone out work construction all uh, uh for another gig once he got out of the summer gig and went back to get that truck and it's still in his family, you know, and that was 40 years ago. Wow. So anyway, we were able to go to Utah, shoot this uh, Ford F100, which is amazing. And, and again, this is sort of the thing that, you know, big Ferrari photo shoots are made out of. And we were able to go into some of the most beautiful parts of around St. George and shoot all of these trucks. And it was just an amazing day and the family and everyone you meet, which I know this, this show is about, right? And the whole family came out. We were running drones and Joe and I don't know what we're doing a whole lot. And he's got, you know, his dad's got his truck there uh, with just a little bit of gas, but we're going to get him in a donut later. And, but he's worried about getting vapor locked on this tank. He can't run very long. It's overheating. And we got the drone guys. And we're losing light. We're losing light uh and we got you know seven trucks lined up we're trying to oh shoot gosh. in 25 minutes so it's fun <laughs> stuff and if, if you've seen that stuff it's it's amazing but the people that we meet coming out of this uh the stories they tell mm -hmm. it, you don't hear it anywhere else mm -hmm. and you know you're instantly connected and they all have the same experience that we all just shared about that first pickup truck yeah. Yeah. what was yeah. his dad's truck in the garage so that was a 60 ford and so that came from his grandfather fat, uh yeah and fat fender did a did a oh, restore on that and yeah but yeah that his oh. grandpa used to put a horse in the background that's exactly right yeah no, <laughs> wow. so the bed was all tweaked wow. and stuff right. oh exactly my gosh. and now it's like showroom quality Whoa. like just gorgeous and it's still in the family no. hey guys i i started following truck rodeo i don't know a month or two ago when we when we talked about putting this together and i noticed my instagram feed started to fill up with other websites that yeah, are the very algorithm. similar there's some really funny one there's like something cobs and there's montana trucks and yeah. so on what do you attribute like you guys are obviously at the forefront of this movement of like not fetishizing but but the authenticity of the trucks to a new audience what do you attribute like what what did this all come from it had to have came from somewhere because it didn't come from the manufacturers obviously mm. yeah I mean, that's a good point we were just talking about this it, it doesn't seem like you can look anywhere without seeing a western theme as of late right i call yeah. it the yellowstone effect mm. yeah. yeah yeah yellowstone's a good good indicator yeah and it's happening you know and you know the queen just dropped a country song uh, a couple of days ago as well so it, it's happening yeah. and i think that's where the wider popularity of pickup trucks is coming from and to that point, that's what we say about truck radio. It's for truck people and those who want to be, right? Mm -hmm. And we're not going to take ourselves too serious. And the community already exists, to your point. There's a lot of guys who have been doing this really, really well. The Instagram accounts, you know, Old Trucks of Montana, I think is maybe what you mentioned. It's mm -hmm. guys who just take art photography. There's also a lot of restorers and collectors out there. And that's why we started Truck Rodeo because a truck you can get today, like I said, is drives like a modern car. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't, you know, my old truck drives like an old truck. But there's trucks out there that you can spend good money for and can sp drive as a daily. And those guys don't have anywhere to sell those trucks, right? Because you put it on Marketplace, well, you're putting a $50,000 truck on Marketplace, the same place you just gave away your couch last week, yeah. mm -hmm. right? right. And you're going to get those people right. that yeah. want a free couch. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or, you know, and, and we were talking about this earlier, um, the people who do sell these trucks that have real value that are, you know, uh, investment quality trucks, um, they put them on the auction sites out of default. You know, they begrudgingly go to those sites. And so that's what we're trying to do is give them a choice that, you know, they don't get beat up by the keyboard cowboys on Marketplace and they don't have to go into waiting queues with some of the larger sites or, again, get buried behind the Maseratis and mini bikes. And there's a – with Truck Rodeo, yes, we want to appeal to the core. Absolutely. And that's where I've been the last few years, you know, flipping old pickup trucks as well. And I know those guys, but there's also a, a new wave of consumers or, you know, curious folks who, 
you know, not looking to make a profit out of this, looking more for the experience. And yeah. mm -hmm. I want to be able to help connect those guys with turnkey trucks. They don't have to worry about and have to smell like gas when they walk to brunch. <laughs> right. Like yeah. I want them to have great. Well, they, yeah. they say millennials too, you know, they value authenticity. Right. So yeah. I'm curious, like how many millennials are you seeing that are poning up 50 mm. grand for a truck? Is that happening? You know, millennials, if we see the cutoff for millennials, probably, I don't even know, 26, 27. No, not a lot. Right. So my mm -hmm. audience is a little uh, obviously older than that, but mm -hmm. there's a little halo effect that comes along with that too. Right. Um, but you know, we're producing gear that has a, a, a wider appeal, but certainly, and you know, we're doing some fun things as well. There's, yeah, there's I mean, just, Oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah. and, and that's what I want to touch upon with that great question, Dan. Um, because when statistically you're not tapping into that demographic of the 27 year olds, but because of your background um, in marketing with the awesome visuals, you're creating a lifestyle brand. So whether they're ready at that point, hmm. they could still join uh, the truck rodeo culture because of the gear, the merch. You're not leaving them out, but you're kind of like, you know, curating them to kind of build them up and mold them and, you know, kind of, you know, embrace them, but not, not fully yet until they're ready to, you know, drop that cash. And so I think you are spreading it out more by your creative campaigns, the merch. It's, I see this as a lifestyle brand. Yeah. And, and trust me, after I start following you guys too, I'm a wagon guy, you know, and now I see the trucks, I'm influenced by just the visuals, just to, I mean, it's my curiosity to be like, how would it feel to get into like, you know, a C10? You yeah, know? I was just going to say that. Yeah. I was just going to mention that, you know, so the one side of the business is creating a marketplace for buyers and sellers to come together. But for the people who have never been in a pickup truck or don't even know what's going on, you're providing an experience that, yeah, that might not be in a market, but they get to see something they've never seen before possibly and know what, know what it was like to at least own the truck maybe back in the day. You're trending this, like, this lifestyle. It's like we're going back in time, but we, obviously we're shooting in 2024. Um, mm -hmm. But you're giving them this kind of um, um, experience that they might not have had before. And I feel like it's you – know, we have a friend of ours. His name's Dexter. <laughs> Filipino guy. Uh, um, never listened to country music in his whole life. Started watching Yellowstone. <laughs> this dude bought boots and <laughs> this hat. Uh, listens to hat. all a hat. hat. He's got the hat and all that stuff and wants to move to Montana. <laughs> I'm like, bro, you don't know what it's <laughs> you, know what you're saying, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't bro. know what you're saying. It's not Southern California. It's not Cebu. But yeah. <laughs> but I'm not gonna knock him for it because he that lifestyle that he thinks is Yellowstone, uh, which might be for some people, but for the majority of people, maybe not. But he's like, I'm attracted to that. So I want to be attracted to that whether I buy it yeah, or not. Exactly. I, so I feel like, it, you know, I would imagine that wasn't premeditated. That's not on accident, you know. But that's what I think is very important is creating those that community that's a uh, user base where yeah. we can experience these things together. You and, know, so and, and have them feel a part of it. So whether they're wearing the shirt. They're part of the truck rodeo right. culture, right? And I think I see, are, are, have you guys even kind of concepted or even uh, brainstorm on in the future doing like driving clinics of your top um, trucks for people to get in and drive or ride in, you know, to get them kind of like, you know, acclimated to that that style of truck and vehicle? Yeah, we were, I, we actually had a concept and I'm trying to bring back but that we would give away a truck for our Father's Day weekend. Uh -huh. Oh, so wow. you could get an old timer truck, a pawpaw truck and a camper topper on it and just get it for the weekend right so to your point yes. when we talk about driving clinics maybe something like That's this cool. is what we're talking about and even it's funny to hear you talk about how your algorithms sort of you know start to, to react <laughs> yeah. to yeah. truck rodeo and we were joking as well can we do a meme campaign where it's like one day after watching or following truck rodeo three days after following truck you got the cowboy hat and you've got uh, the boot, oh, you know? yeah. four days you've got yeah. the cooler and you got the dog and you get the round down the back but yeah so and that's what where i'm like creatively you know you know you want to take out those elements that people associate old trucks with like the the patio chairs and i think you need to sell merch yeah. or or no accessories that mimic that old school yeah. so they could put in the back of the truck later on too you know so we've got some pretty cool <laughs> things planned so so yeah. two things uh one of which, you remember the old vinyl decals that go in the back class of mm -hmm. trucks? Yep. We'll, do a, uh, we'll do a series of those as that's well, right? right? So cool. I'm working with one of our artists in Iowa, uh, trying to get that going. The second thing is, uh, back in the day, Igloo made a bench seat cooler. Oh. It was called oh, a cool oh, rest, man. and it sat right beside you. 
I had a cup Pop holder. Oh, yep. wow. Yep. For non alcoholic uh, beverages. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, well, so, you know? so we're, uh, we've got a couple of those. We're yeah, building that's... a campaign around as well. Uh, so, some fun things. You're exactly right. And this comes from that sort of PAPS mentality, exactly. right? So, how do you do a, uh, a lot with just a little and do it in a clever way? Uh, so, to your point about driving clinics, absolutely. How do you bring that to life? And, and it's much wider than the folks who are going to drop 25 grand on things. We were talking earlier. We have a lot of things planned, but one of which is probably going to be a motorcycle and vintage um, um, truck event mm. as well. So, oh, nice. you know, nice. as we scale, uh, that'll uh, come a little more into focus. But, yeah, we have some fun things planned like that. So you kind of touched on it a, a bit ago, but I'm curious how geography plays into mm -hmm. this. Because people think of trucks, they think of what? The heartland. Mm -hmm. That's right. Middle America. Yeah. But is that really the case? Because, as you said, it's spreading. But do you kind of target Middle America, or yeah, no, that's that a, not an issue. That's that's a that's a really good question. So in the Midwest, where I'm from, so I grew up in Missouri, small town, New London, Missouri. Um, those trucks are not available anymore. The bottom third is rusted out, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. Idaho, California, Oregon, um, High Sierra states are where those trucks are. So it is more attractive to a buyer in the Midwest or Florida, where it's in you know, salt rust down there too, to get trucks when they're coming a little bit out of this area. But no, it's a. I don't know if we have targeted our geography. We've had some conversations, obviously, about what that person looks like, what they're using this truck for, uh, how will they be exposed to this, and. You know, when we talk about audience, we also talk about the brand, which you were talking about earlier. And when we talk about all the big auction sites out there, it's amazing to me as a brand guy that they're not doing more with their brand, right? Mm -hmm. And if you talk to them, they're like, yeah, this is what we're doing. But when I think of a brand, I think of liquid death, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> how am I going to – and I think of truck rodeos. How are we going to deliver this insatiable appetite of content around trucks yes. and build this community? And so that's what I love. And so we talk about the audiences and how to build that brand of life. Um, I came with PAPS. What happened with that beer is it got a little bit of buzz on the West Coast. It started in Oregon, mm. the, uh, the, the resurgence of that. And then it made its way to Brooklyn a little bit. And then it sort of bridged the gap in the middle of the, of the nation. <laughs> and so, again, uh, I'm fortunate enough to be a part of some of those things and, and some of the big brands that hit. Yeah. Uh, I was also in the cannabis world and uh, was part of one of the big uh, IPO cannabis companies uh, with one of the first ones to go. And it sort of learned the startup world and how to hunt and how to go hard. And, and that's where we're having fun with Truck Rodeo doing this a little bit and bringing it to life and, and uh, finding the great trucks. <laughs> uh, and what we're doing right now, we are sort of uh, building the best in class examples of trucks. So um, I'm relisting a lot of trucks that I'll find buried on Marketplace or something like that. And I'll, because there'll be amazing trucks that'll be from, you know, somebody in Southern Mississippi who, again, doesn't know where to get rid of this thing. They're a collector and they don't want to work, wait on one of the big auctions. And so I'll post it on our site, send them a note in Marketplace, great rig. It's on Truck Rodeo. Uh, I'll wait about 10 minutes holy shit, this is amazing. I love this. Thank you. You know, and so that's the kind of stuff we love to hear. And so yeah. just relisting that stuff more and more. And so when we soft launch in June, uh, we're happy to, to see what happens. And we're uh, the way we're doing this, we're going to start to put showcase themes together around auctions. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a little bit of auction fatigue out there. We're starting mm -hmm. to see from mm -hmm. some of the big guys. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have a combination of buy it now, make offer, and auctions. But the auctions we do run are going to be somewhat different. Uh, we're going to do small lots, so you know, no more than 10 lots. And we're going to do it by theme. So it may be F-series trucks, right? Mm. It may be 90s country trucks. Mm. And we'll okay. dress that up around 90s country music. And there'll be a theme to that. We may have a 90s country band that's produce cool. something leading oh. up to that auction time. So that's the way we're sort of thinking about that. It's mm. very different. It's interesting. Wow. Yeah. When we think about a brand, and again, there's all these sites out there that are just – what kills me about this, and I've done a lot of deep dive into the auction business as of late um, – like we said, it's it's uh, most difficult thing is to build the community. And then you can scale, but if you don't, you have to take every product, every lot, every truck you may maybe don't want to take. You've got to take to cover your monthly nut. We don't want to do that. Um, so, quite frankly, what we're doing is super different than what anyone else is doing in the sense of we are putting our business model together right now in a way that uh, will allow people to post without uh, having to pay. So it'll be free to post and it will not be a buyer's fee. And so we want to collaborate with partner sponsors to offset this cost. So some of the content we're talking about, 
that would make sense for Wrangler. Yeah. That would make sense for Stetson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would make sense oh, for yeah. Lavender. So branded yeah. content yeah. is right. what you guys are going yeah, for. Yeah, so that's that's where we are right now, right? And so this is in the works, and um, but this is the way we look at this. Uh, we build our revenue from merchandise, from gear, from content, and we can collaborate with like-minded partners, and that'll keep everyone honest when they're putting their best products up there. So that's the way we're thinking about this, and quite frankly, no one is doing anything like this. Yeah. That coupled with these themed auctions, mm -hmm. right? We think we can get a lot of buzz out and have a lot of fun. Again, uh, how great would it be for uh, Wrangler to be yeah. involved when we're doing all dually trucks that, you know, pull uh, horse trailers? Yeah. You know, so fun stuff like that. That's Do amazing. you think that the um, what you're doing is going to help level the playing field for people that want a, you know, a daily, you know, I say daily, but, you know, a nice friendly ten thousand dollar pickup truck they just get into and drive and not care what happens to it up to the full resto mod do you think it would it, it will open up the door for that because there's guys that like like helm wouldn't drive a fully resto modded out two hundred thousand dollar truck but he would definitely get a twenty thousand dollar you know cherry c10 that he could drive every day and not worry about mm -hmm. you know because i know there's a lot of people out there that want the baller trucks but don't have baller budgets right, right? so you want to create a I mean, maybe a playing field where they can actually participate at the very least just go to an event and yeah. maybe not have a truck you know so it sounds like that you guys are kind of creating that is that yeah i mean it feels like that and uh it's i don't have a baller budget either and now i'm obsessed with these old trucks and it's like that's <laughs> it's all i want but yeah you see you talked about like target marketing and stuff i think from my like age group 40s and you know 30s 40s there it's like what i've seen is like you have certain people that are into the teslas and the hybrids and everything right and then you got people kind of like me who like the old stuff, like the analog stuff and like the old bikes and that has a Kickstarter on it. And it's kind of a pain in the ass to start sometimes, but there's so <laughs> there's soul there. And I, yeah. I have a name for my bike and there's a connection there and I have stories yeah, yeah. with that bike. And, uh, but you know, I could test ride a live wire electric motorcycle and have fun on that, but I didn't feel the, the connection. Same you know? thing. Yeah. yeah and so I, I take that energy and I feel like it's the same thing with these trucks. It's the, you know, there's guys my age that are like, man, we, we see the cyber trucks and all that mm -hmm. stuff, but uh, we want some with soul in it. And mm -hmm. you could be a city boy living out here in Ventura. You could be out in the Midwest and still have a appreciation for it. Yeah. When, I, when do you think it's when do you think it, things changed for the trucks? Because there was it wasn't that long ago where trucks, like you just said, you could pick one up for a couple thousand bucks. That that's not the case anymore. When did it start changing, and and what made it change? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, and we were talking earlier. So when I was in Chicago. Uh, I was worked for PAPS, and but I would also flip trucks on the side. Again, I grew up in small town Missouri. I would run down to Central Illinois, buy a five thousand dollar truck, bring it back to my little water and hole, the Matchbox bar, and I'd sell it to a guy, or I'd drive it for a couple weeks and sell it to the guy, right? Until I couldn't find any more five thousand dollar trucks, and that's when the seed of truck radio was born too. But I think uh, the Yellowstone effect had a lot to do with that. I think the overall popularity of you know F one fifties, and out of every four car sold, one is a truck right now. That is having to do with this right if you go to shop a big uh, uh truck right now you know a 2004 uh, it's going to cost you seventy-five thousand dollars. and in that showroom next to it probably is going to be a 1960s model of that same truck right so you're starting to see them more and more so i think um that the yellowstone effect and i think just popularity of trucks in general has led people to explore a little bit more and the accessibility Again, collections of people who weren't letting this go uh, years ago or younger collectors who had the stuff were flipping them with a little more frequency. And just these restorers and builders, again, these trucks drive better when they came off the uh, the assembly line. So they're they're out there. And so, you know, Truck Radio gives the platform for those guys to be seen. And that's where, you know, I think that's coming from a little bit. Yeah. It, As I wonder, too, if, I wonder how much um, country music played in this. Because one of our favorite mm -hmm. songs is... Buy me a boat. Buy me a boat. Buy me a boat. Right. <laughs> yeah. well, well, I'm not a big country yeah, guy, yeah, but yeah, I exactly. love that song. And that's and it, lifestyle, right? Get a, get a truck and buy me a well, so my of, boat. And so yeah. many of these country songs are about falling in love and being in love and being in a truck, right? right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was going to say, not just the Yellowstone effect, but the Americana yeah. effect, which I think is oh, above yeah. all of it. Yep. Yep. And the big open roads and the big, yeah. the, the big open country, if you will. I'm curious... Do you see that same kind of passion and love and nostalgia and loyalty coast to coast? Or is it different West Coast, East Coast? And I'm curious about where women fit into this. 
Interesting. So uh, a lot of our followers are women. A lot of DMs I get are from women who are looking for pickup trucks. And that's mm-hmm. a little bit of the impetus for Truck Rodeo too. When I say for people who want to be truck people, that's it. So a lot more than you would think, I think. Um, yeah, I know some musicians in Austin uh, who are driving pickup trucks, who are women, uh, who are reaching out to me and, and asking what to look for and things like that. So seeing a lot more of that and ownership as well. And a lot of women driving great trucks, right? Like spending the $50,000 to get them done by the restorers. Um, as far as the loyalty, yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. It's nostalgia of, you know, the people who grew up with their uh, on a farm or their grandfather's farm and they got to drive that that truck in the pasture or maybe learn to uh, to drive that truck. Or, you know, again, the old Jim Reeves or Merle Haggard tape in, in the tape deck. And they just remember that, you know, Joe and I were talking about on the way over here about country music and how much that plays into this culture. And we've been, you know, uh, jamming out some Charlie Crockett and his daughter loves some new Charlie Crockett country music and he was just talking about it's the experience that goes along with that yeah. so when we talk about the trucks and the loyalty it's that nostalgia that's doing that uh, that's driving that and so our audience is one they don't know how to buy that truck right uh, they're not looking for a profit looking more for experience and they're looking for trust and so what we've been able to do is collect them or connect them with the collectors and with the, the right trucks and and uh, you know I, I will tell you so we've been running the numbers pretty good uh, and we looked at one truck that was posted on one of the big sites and it, same truck was posted on our site. Uh, we outperformed views by almost five times. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, we were super stoked on that, but yeah, I mean, almost wow. 7,000 views on the, well, I'll call the boomer site <laughs> 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 and about 45,000 views on wow. our Wow. Account, That's right? great. And so, you know, when we talk about that and, and connecting people to the right trucks where they can feel good and, you know, uh, I've always thought of Truck Rodeo as a text thread with your buddies. They're like, hey, look what I found, right? This is super clean. Yeah. And, uh, and, and the nostalgia comes out of it, not only from the experience of, you know, sharing times with your family or father in the truck, but also going out and buying old trucks. There's something about finding the truck and talking to the guy on a phone call, the old timer he's had it, and then saying, I'm going to meet you there in the morning, right? Trying to get there before anyone else, getting your coffee and getting out and, you know, getting your U-Haul trailer and not sure if you're going <laughs> to, what you're going to find or not. But I love those mornings and the people I talk to on truck radio and, and this community has been great. A lot of the guys who sell trucks have reached out to me and said, hey, love what you're doing. And why don't you come con- uh, get some content of me going out and getting these trucks and things like that. And so that's the, again, sort of the, when I talk about these old trucks and me flipping them, that's what I love, right? Like, hey, I got $5,000 cash in my pocket. I got to hit an ATM another, because, you, you know, uh, or or sometimes you, you have to hit an ATM in a, or hit a bank in Minnesota before you get to St. Paul. Like I remember leaving Chicago one time, I was going to get a Ford F100 out of St. Paul. And again, had talked to the guy, I don't know, found on Craigslist or something. And uh, clean title, good price. It was a Sunday. I was like, how can I get cash on a Sunday? And I found a bank somewhere in like upper Wisconsin that I was going to kind of pass through, but maybe like 100 miles of the way that I could <laughs> grab cash on a Sunday. And it worked out. And so I was on my way there. Uh, I called him. I was like, hey, I'm 40 minutes out. Sorry, guy. Guy just came and got it. Oh. You know? And we've all been there, right? Oh, yeah. But oh, yeah. th- I remember it like it was yesterday. And it was probably six years ago. Oh. Just how much it, a, a gut punch it was yeah. to me. But that feeling, the nostalgia of finding out and go get it a deal. Joe, I know you've yeah. done that a few times with motorcycles. Yeah, motorcycles. just do that with the bike. A 75 XL 350. That's mint. Cherry. It looks like it's just off the showroom floor. And uh, I'm a sucker for these old bikes. Saw it on Facebook Marketplace lifted, listed a day ago. And so I called the guy. We talked on the phone for 45 minutes Whoa. while I was at like a family dinner party. So my wife's inside like, get in. You know? <laughs> I'm like, oh, hold on. Give me a couple more minutes. It's important. Yeah. yeah. And then next day went out there, took the kids in my uh, truck and um, went out. It was like Barstow. This guy ended up being like a pretty famous uh, Honda monkey restorer. Mm. Those old old school bikes, mm. like little trail bikes. And uh, yeah, he had this bike and. Uh, my kids, you know, weren't weren't stoked about being in the desert sitting in the truck. But mm-hmm. I talked to the guy for two hours in the driveway. He took a grand off the price because of just the camaraderie that we nice. shared and the passion. Wow. He's like, I want this bike to go to a good home and I'm so stoked that you picked it up. And it's that that hunt and that high and the and yeah. the connection yeah. that him and I shared and 
I mean, we I sent him photos numerous times afterwards. He's like, dude, send me oh, stuff. I want to see you. That's, so, that's, that's awesome. awesome. That's it's that same yeah. thing. It's in the trucks. It's in the cars. It's, yeah. you know, it's everywhere. Yeah. And, it's just, and again, talking about the economy of those trucks, I mean, we were talking about cash, but, you know, we, also to the point about when did trucks start to take off? There was a time where you wouldn't wire anyone money for anything, mm -hmm. right? And... And if you did, you were the scammer, right? If you're like, hey, old timer, I'm going to wire your money. You, you've always got to feel them out a little bit. You get, I put on my Missouri accent a little bit when I talk to them. But <laughs> when you start to see, well, more people are accepting wire payments. And that's when you're like, well, you know, the truck should match that. But to your point, that's crazy. I remember getting, um, I remember I wired a guy $5,500 for a scout once. It was in Alabama. I was in Chicago. And the wire company, I forget, the, uh, whatever Express called, and was like, hey, you can't do this. I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, yeah, we were shutting this down. You can't just wire someone $5,000 for a, a <laughs> scout. What is a scout? I'm like, oh. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh, I didn't get no. it. Now you could Venmo that. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, it's crazy what's going on uh, in that world. And that's, you know, truck rodeo. When we talk about transport, like these are all big things. You guys buy cars online as well, right? And it's tough, but you got to get a transport guy. You got to mm -hmm. get someone to go check yeah. it out. And you want to make sure you're dealing with the right folks. But it's all part of the fun. It goes yeah, into that. Yeah, for sure. Mm. So yeah. it's all inclusive with Truck Rodeo. All of that is taken care of in a sense. Or... Yeah, I mean, we'll, so we're connecting the people with the right resources, right? So lenders as well, oh, wow. uh, transport folks. And we were just talking earlier when, as we were going through your media collection up there. Um, you know, we hope to do old CBs and things like that at some point. And some yeah. of the uh, new old stock of old Chevy stuff, which, you know, there's some old Chevy Heartbeat of America yeah. gear is starting to trend yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, and yeah. so we'll sort of pulse that stuff out in part of the culture of this and auction off and, and buy it now sort of approach. Well, before you guys got here, we were coming up with some ideas for you. I mean, Helm, I think, wants to oh, yeah. see you actually have a, an actual truck rodeo. <laughs> like an auction, <laughs> all the trucks, your top ten go out, you yeah. know. Yeah. And he wants to be on the hood of one. That's good. Exactly. Yeah. Steer horns. Yeah. Or, or you have to hold on. Or you like hold on to the, yeah. the helm the back. I <laughs> think I know the answer to this. Have what? you ever been to an actual rodeo? No, not yet. <laughs> That's a shocker. That's why. I'm shocked. Well, you guess never what? Been truck rodeo. rodeo is the, the my inspiration to do that. <laughs> There's plenty See. of Filipinos that. <laughs> <laughs> my wife trust me. A few years, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. But what I see is great about uh, um, you guys creating this lifestyle brand is that I. I think your background in marketing you're tapping into i think sensory marketing where you're when you talk about trucks the first thing i think of is a playlist music mm -hmm. then the touch mm -hmm. the smell the feel like that igloo what kind of drink is in there so you're tapping oh, you know what kind of drink is in there huh me i mean it would be a ice americano <laughs> oh, geez. or odules oh. you're never oh, allowed I'm... to have a truck no. ever. And I, yeah. I, i'm with you and i also think no about truck. all five people in the bench seat e in the front you're able to talk exactly to but that sensory and, type is what I, I i really um pull from the uh, truck rodeo uh brand yeah you know you're touching upon every single um aspect of that because I, I could literally smell, you know, from the gasoline or is it food in there? But a playlist yeah. is would be, I mean, that's what I, I, I hear. Yeah, thanks to this guy, my whole Spotify now is Willie Nelson. <laughs> oh. <Charlie Parker. laughs> and, and speaking of Willie Nelson, tell us about your boots. Oh, yeah. These, boots. Uh, so I've got, so actually, these boots came, uh, so I used to work on a... Uh, an account called Marlboro and in the big time ad agency world. As and, in Marlboro Man? Yeah, as in Marlboro Man. So I worked in Mexico and Latin America for Marlboro uh, Branding and Marketing. And we had some boots made for a promotion we were doing. So these are custom boots that were part of the samples I got done. Yeah. And I was happened to be at a Willa Nelson concert in Chicago probably around 2007, uh, 2005, and uh, was able to uh, hand this boot up to him on stage. <laughs> he took the marker and I uh, awesome. signed it, handed it back to me. I put it back on my foot. Still and walked on there? Up. Still <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Still off too much? Yeah. Oh, we can. Oh, oh. that's cool. We'll get that a picture of it. Cool. That is so yeah. cool. <laughs> that is awesome. But the, the cool thing about those boots are they look like they're perfectly broken in. Oh, they're very broken in for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, like creases in the right places. Yeah. And I had to give uh, Joe a little bit of uh, a boot consulting. We were shooting some heavy machinery out of southern Minnesota. Uh, in, no, uh, in November, right? Yeah. And Joe showed up. I met him there because I'm in, in the Midwest. And Joe showed up with his uh, Chuck Taylors there. And I was like, well, no, we got to go get you a pair of boots. <laughs> 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 no, but these are, these are good. Yeah. Uh, no, you're right. When we talk about uh, culture and the smell, I was thinking about this on the way over. Like m I grew up with trucks and, and my brother, my old brother, is six years old and uh, grew up small town, Missouri, but he delivered pizzas in the next town over, which was 20,000 people, Hannibal, Missouri. 
where Mark Twain is from. Mm. And there's a pizza spot there called Cassano's. So he and his best friend, Darren, used to deliver pizzas. Well, my brother drove, and this was in the 80s, he drove a 1951 Chevrolet pickup Whoa. that he would deliver pizzas in. <laughs> was that the column shift too? It had column shift. Oh. And it, uh, man, I tell you what, it smelled like mice and hay and all <laughs> kinds of crazy stuff. And he would deliver pizzas in there. And of course, the pizzas would smell like gasoline. And then when they would get to the person. <laughs> but I remember that truck so much. And we talk about the center experience. Yeah. And then he upgraded and got a 1955 Ford pickup, Fat Fender, same thing, named it Little Susie, I believe. But it smelled a little bit less of gas. It had, <laughs> it had, I think it had fifties on the back. Again, we're in Midwest Missouri, you know, snow. Uh, no reason to have fifties on anything. Couldn't get around. But I remember the it had aftermarket seats in there that really smelled of this deep leather, and again, just sort of mm-hmm. some farm manure sort of smell too, like a mixture of cocktail of you know gasoline and and farm culture. But but and he would deliver pizzas in that. And we talk about sensory experience and and sort of those nostalgia moments. I remember that, and that's yeah. what I think about. Wow. I always so love the cool. steering wheel. I'm a steering wheel yeah. for all mm-hmm. kinds of cars and, and big truck, right? Steering wheels and the chrome and the dashboards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember those mm-hmm. just being beautiful. Yeah, I remember the first time I saw a bed liner in a pickup truck and I was like, that should be freaking illegal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's, yeah. I mean, you want to see the dents and you want to see it all bent up because that's what the truck yeah, was I've never for. Never saw the hay. Yeah, I've never yeah. seen a bed liner in an old truck like that. I've only seen them in or they like, sprayed like, it oh, with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, but yeah. I mean, it makes sense. That's, yeah. right. that's, that's a trigger for me though, for sure. Like yeah. you know, uh, seeing a bed liner in an old truck or something yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah, but like, it's why? Why? That's why I see an old like C10 or F100, and trust me, I'm all about. LS swaps and you know the sure. corporate engine swaps and all that stuff but you made a really interesting point about everything smelling like gas yeah. you know and when you start up an old small block Chevy or old small block Ford mm. and you're going to smell the gas in the carburetor you know and it's going to be running rich or whatever and that is like that hits it right there. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. that is a big part of but it. But that beer tastes even better after you turn that thing off. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> or, or while you're driving. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, no. I mean, no. well, on, on the farm. On the farm. My, Private property. My, my yeah. dad's side of the family, they had a farm in Missouri. And, uh, or Missouri, sorry. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm not saying they were condoning drinking and driving, but they were. you were on the farm. And they're having they're having a Bud Light or a Coors Light. And they're probably driving what an eighth of a mile, maybe on the if farm. that, or if that, yeah. yeah. We're just gonna yeah. go down yeah. down to the river, right. go do some fishing or yeah, whatever. That's part of the Missouri drive, yeah. yeah. by the and way. I'm, is... And I'm a... like, <laughs> yeah. Don't you guys judge like distance by how many beers it is? Yeah, we, yeah. We, <laughs> and we elect that's our four mayor. beers away, man. <laughs> we, we elect a mayor by how tall the pickup tires are on his truck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, I grew up in California my whole life, LA boy, and uh, go out to the farm with my dad, you know, for the summer. You know, and experience that life. But I remember being in a truck or an old car and saying, you know, what do I remember from that? Other than the ride being all bumpy and, you know, loud and all that stuff. But the smell. Yeah, mm. the exactly. sensory smell. Mm. And people that have grown up in the modern age in the last, let's say, 30 years have never been in even a, in a carbureted car. I mean, we all know what that's like to be in a carbureted car. You're providing that experience for those people as best as you can, obviously, through the Instagram or through whatever. So I think that's really important because you say brand identity, Helm, like, like, uh, or uh, marketing, uh, lifestyle, brand, lifestyle, sorry, brand. Lifestyle, yeah. lifestyle brand, but it's more than the lifestyle brand. Yes, it is a lifestyle at the end of the day, but you're providing something that somebody has never even known existed. Mm-hmm. And that to me is where, like the Yellowstone effect thing where like there's a whole world out here that's not like on my iPad or on my <laughs> phone. Mm-hmm. I can go out and enjoy something that's, and I don't even call it a throwback. It's just, it's always going to be cool. An old pickup truck is always going to be cool and it's yeah. always going to be what it is. Yeah. Like the Cybertruck exactly. the cyber truck will not be, the Cybertruck will always be the Cybertruck, mm-hmm. which I like the Cybertruck, but it's never going to be yeah. what I call a pickup truck. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so I, I just find it really interesting. For sure. Yeah. And some of the stuff we just shot, um, we shot with our friend Robin in LA, who is a photographer as well, but we shot his uh, 1997 Ford F-250, that Calypso Queen uh, piece we did. It's a Calypso green color. It's mm-hmm. an amazing truck. It's uh, highly sought after as well. Is that uh, a dark or light power green? It's got a light green. Okay. Like oh, wow. A, a Calypso green. It's uh, like aqua. Okay. It's a two-tone. Anyway, it's amazing and so yes it's a great truck but the great thing about that is his uh 
his rescue dog Jada rides with him in right seat all day long, oh. right? And he he drives that big F two fifty through downtown L A wow. as a daily, which is crazy, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and with his his dog riding shotgun. And so that was the story we wanted to tell as well. Like you know, I've ridden with Robin in that truck to Mexico with that dog running. Uh, uh, shotgun. We've had choppers in the back. Uh, I've had, you know, our guys in the back on the tailgate drinking mezcals and beers. And it's just fun. And we talk about that's the kind of stuff we want to bring to life. And so we had that great photo shoot with Robin. As I was sort of putting that content together, actually, in the last few days, that's what uh, came to life for me was just like, there's a lot of soul in those trucks and what they do. You know, I was with him in Mexico. I was, he was riding, he was driving the chase truck for a chopper trip. Uh, that we were running for the El Diablo run from California down to uh, San Felipe, Mexico. Um, he, we were riding choppers and he was a chase truck we needed, right? But he was giving strangers and hitchhikers, everyone along the highway down there rides, right? And Jada would get out and he'd throw Frisbee. And <laughs> so that truck became like this whole sort of the, the big toe of this, you know, this uh, trip down to, to Mexico. So a lot of fun stuff that comes out of, you know, just this vehicle as a whole. There's no backup camera on that truck. <laughs> <laughs> so um, being that you deal with trucks, uh, what kind of trucks do you have in your stable or do you have, yeah. I imagine you have some. At I, least. I do. Yeah. So I've got a, uh, right now I have a 1972 Ford F100. That's two tone brown and yellow cab lights came from Washington. I actually bought that truck. I had sold a 65 C10 that was red. I bought it online in Abilene, Texas, mm -hmm. wired the guy $5,500. I got it. Not exactly what I expected. <laughs> it just happened, right? Uh, drove it for a couple months. This truck was beautiful. Drove it for a couple months. Sold it to an old timer who's come to get it. I pulled it out of the garage, three on the tree, uh, started it up. It was idling. All of a sudden, it kicks in the gear in reverse. Doors oh, open. No. Oh, oh yeah. no. Yeah. The driver's side door is open. It totally sandwiches the door. Oh. Guy's yeah, supposed to be there in like 13 minutes. And oh, I was like, oh my no. gosh. So I was like, sorry, man. I just crashed this uh, whole thing. But I had it fixed and uh, retouched the paint. So that was, so I took that truck I, when I finally did sell it. I, I took the money, uh, went across town and bought this Ford F100 with the same money I just uh, had earned. And uh, that's what's in my garage now. Oh. We're talking about getting it out here for him. So I have a Ford F100 right now. I have uh, two Scouts. Uh, I'm an SUV nerd a little bit as well. So I have two Scout Travelers, one in uh, Florida, one in Chicago. And I think that's all I have, a lot of motorcycles. So a couple choppers and old dirt mm -hmm. bikes. Uh, my wife has a motorcycle as well. Wow. Yeah. So you have a fleet. I have a fleet, yeah. yeah. But I need to, I need, like you guys know, I need to get rid of some of that. But you know what? <laughs> well, what's Joe's going on? looking. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> make it out here. Yeah, he's talking about bringing that truck out here so yeah. I can yeah. make some content. Is your wife into the trucks too? She is a lot into trucks. She loves them for sure. My wife is, is into trucks. Oddly enough, I, she surprises me all the time about, she's like, yeah, cool to have a single cab. Uh, like, but, you know, she didn't say single cab. She's like, the small trucks with only one seat. <laughs> oh, whatever. That's what says, but my wife would love to have a little S10 or yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. Like that or oh, one of those yeah. little Mazda throwback trucks or a little B two thousands. Oh yeah, uh, but yeah, for sure. But and she drives them as well. Uh, I just got uh, electronic fuel injection on one of my Scouts, so she's able to drive that. I smell a lot less like gas. Yeah, yeah. Well. yeah. <laughs> um, Are Scouts manual? Uh, so they are manual and they're uh, they're manual and they're automatic. Okay. But the oh. ones I have are automatic. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, that's the other thing. So you know, big standard standard transmissions. You know, those are were work trucks back in the day. And yep. so not everyone knows how to drive those. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm not a big standard transmission guy. I, you know, I live in Chicago. That's kind of a pain. Mm. Getting but, stuck in traffic with an yeah, man, I've, manual yeah. transmission. Yeah, my leg ain't strong enough for... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with the Turbo 400. Yeah, yeah. There you go. exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How much fun are you guys having through with all this? So much fun, man. I mean, I like I said, I'm I'm hunting now for a truck like this. I'm constantly sending kind of beater trucks to Kyle like hey does this look cool man because I, I just want one you know but I don't I don't have the budget for a thirty thousand uh, dollar pickup truck as my secondary car but yeah it's it's uh the passion that's there is the same thing that's there for the bikes and the Porsches and all the other stuff I'm into and it's so fun to like help kind of create something from nothing and yeah. all you know like through Kyle's knowledge and passion and I'm having a blast and we've done some pretty wild stuff and 
like he said, you know, he dragged me along on this like tractor shoot out in Minnesota. And I'm like, oh, man. what What am I doing out here? And, but we're like really cool people. You know, like I met one of the guys was literally his mom while we were shooting. His mom was on a tractor at their farm right down the road. So he lives here. She lives there. She's 60 in her mid 60s, still running a tractor. Awesome. And if it breaks down, he said, me and my dad will go over and fix it. And then she pulls out her Bible and reads Bible verses oh. while oh. they're fixing oh the tractor. Wow. And it's like, yeah. I would have never been been in that place if it wasn't for like the little adventures that we've been going on so i'm i'm That's having fun. a blast yeah. yeah we've been finding great trucks and going and shooting them you know i'll find some great stuff like we did in utah or different friends and things like that but like i said it's sort of evolved where people have called us and we were doing some work for an auction company that's uh, based around, you know, semis and uh, heavy machinery and construction equipment and so again instagram being the new linkedin i reached out to a young kid young farmer I follow on Instagram who's in Southern Minnesota and we went up and shot all his stuff and spent the day with him and just amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, beautiful sunsets and Southern Minnesota with this big tractor machinery and young guys who don't, you know, they have to know how to fix everything. And I was so impressed by these guys. Like, you know, in my world, we break down on chopper inside the road. Some guy knows how to fix it. The other guy's going to YouTube it, right? This kid is like, nope. I got to know how to fix it. And if I don't, I'll get the neighbor to come fix mm -hmm. this combine for me too. But you know, is that James, so, James all about farming. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. It, James and all about yeah. farming. Um, so anyway, yeah. So fun stuff coming out of it. One of the things, more fun things we did. So we are dropping merch and Joe will tell you, uh, I can have some harebrained ideas once in a while. Oh, yeah. And so when we got the lead on this orange truck out of Utah, and I was like, we're going to go shoot this thing. This is exactly what we need. And, uh, the owner was into it. We got out there and I was like, you know what? we need to think about merchandise too. What if we put a vending machine in the desert and filled it with truck rodeo hats and then shot a film? <laughs> he goes, no, you're crazy. <laughs> so the next thing I know, I'm looking for vending machines on Marketplace. <laughs> oh, and we find one. And uh, so this is a crazy thing. So yeah, I meet Joe in, in uh, around St. George, Southern Utah. I fly in from Chicago. He flies in from LA. Uh, we meet, I guess we go to Las Vegas. We meet in Las Vegas, drive to St. George. Go track this kid down who's going to rent me a vending machine for two days while we're out here shooting. I think it's $200. We chase him down for the afternoon. We go to the storage locker. He doesn't have the key. Hey, wait a minute. Let me go get the key. Great. We wait 30 minutes. It's 115 degrees. Mm, Joe hot. and I <laughs> don't know each other super well at that point. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, we're, you know, we're an hour into this adventure. Uh, the kid comes back. is like, oh, shoot, that's not the right key. Let me go. You know what? screw it i'll just go to home depot and i'll get a grinder and like another hour you know how this goes right oh, yeah. so so it's a <laughs> whole day yeah it's a whole day thing yeah. so to get the vending machine we finally get the vending machine i rented a truck from alamo we throw the 500 hundred dollar vending machine in the back of the truck get to the hotel and i'm like oh what am i going to do with this vending machine in the hotel while we stay here tonight so i asked the guy can we keep a vending machine <laughs> in the parking lot uh he, said, he actually was okay with it yeah. so we unloaded this 500 pound vending machine put it in our parking space then we went and shot that truck yeah. Uh, because we couldn't have the vending machine in the truck because he was going to be in the back shooting from the uh -huh. pickup bed. So we had to leave it at the Super 8 motel. <laughs> vending machine out in the middle nowhere, wrapped in, in the saran wrap or, you know. Um, and then we finally got, dragged it out to the desert again after taking in and out of the truck about, I don't know, seven, eight, nine times. And we get to the desert and Joe and I kind of look at each other. He's like, what do you have planned? I go, so what do you have planned? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, luckily I storyboarded out a little bit of a concept. So we had luckily kind of I got the vending yeah. machine. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> and by now you're sunburned. Oh, you're yeah. wiped out. And... Yeah. Long, long days with truck rodeo. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. We, we filled this vending machine with, uh, with hats and we got this great shot of uh, Steph pulling up this F-150 and putting a change in the vending machine and the hat falling out. And so we're going to debut that oh, in a couple nice. weeks as well. Well, so anyway, crazy stuff we've done, but yeah, when we're together, it's usually running hard. You know, we storyboard a little bit out where we can, uh, but it's, it's fun and we're getting some great stuff. Joe, you know, he's buying a lot of equipment. Uh, we, we know enough about the process and he gets where I'm going where we have really great chemistry and we were shooting my friend Spencer in, in, um, in Highland Park about this time last year and his old, uh, D100 swept line. And he unsolicited said you guys work really really well mm, together nice. and this is a truck guy who doesn't you know doesn't care about relationships or anything yeah. you know but he's like huh yeah you guys work well together because we're on the fly like changing some things and nothing's ever the way it is right mm. and i've got this crazy idea for the way things work and i'm like a also i'm 
I'm like a dog. I don't eat until I'm done with the with the task, right? I get home and then I can eat and comfortable, but I don't eat during the day. And so as we run, you know, 16, 17 hour days. I'm an Italian kid. I need food. <laughs> I'm just, this guy finally started feeding me on the last trip. I was like, we need to hit a diner. Uh, uh, pasta. Look, I'm Italian. I got to eat. <laughs> He's doing it with the hand gestures. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah. hey, hey, hey. I run pretty steady diet of uh, Bucky's coffee and weed pen. <laughs> 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 He yeah. needs food. But, uh, but yeah, so it's crazy. Like these adventures are great. Like I said, you know, hanging with Robin that day it's, and shooting his dog and getting those donuts up there in, in the canyon were great. Yeah, shooting with Brett in Utah with, uh, was it Snow Canyon? Yeah, Snow Canyon, which is. I, I don't know if you guys heard of that. Place. I've hiked at Snow yeah. Canyon. Gorgeous. Beautiful. We, yeah. so we were there. In Ford the does their shoots there a lot for their cars. Yeah. Uh -huh. Whereabouts is it? Uh, uh, near St. George, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. north of St. George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Northwest. Yeah, it's a Georgia. beautiful area. Mm -hmm. So I was in the back of rental truck. Yeah, right. And I'm shooting this orange truck, and it is like I'm already just googling over this thing because it's like, oh my god, it's one of the prettiest trucks I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Brett's got such a passion for those trucks, and that's kind of his like, you know, the the sweetest one he's got. I think um, I know he's probably got emotional connections to the other trucks, but uh, shooting that thing. Uh, in Snow Canyon, and I just took a moment. I took a selfie video of me, and we had, we're probably using like behind the scenes stuff for it. But I was like, "Look where I'm at right now!" You know, shooting this guy's truck, and it's one of the prettiest spots I'd ever seen before. Uh -huh. And just hanging out, doing what we love, and I, I think if you have that, you know, if it's if that passion's there, then it didn't feel like work at all. Right. You know, yeah. 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 you mentioned yeah. the passion. Do you think? I mean, obviously, this is a uh, it's a business you know, venture. But do you think that if you didn't have the passion for trucks or cars in general, um, do you think you would have this kind of um, traction, this kind of um, success? Success, yeah. yeah. So that is an interesting question. And the obvious answer is yes, but also I think I'm super intrigued by the economy that's created. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to be clear by, about that. Um, yeah, I like trucks, but, you know, as I just mentioned, I have two classic SUVs in one truck. Now that I think about it, right? So, so yeah, I like them, but I'm also just intrigued by this economy and these trucks um, and how to bring them to the right people. We were watching the Glendale Meekum auctions are going on this weekend, right? And I, we usually run a ranch truck pick, like here's our picks for the best ranch trucks going to the auction, and then we'll do results. We've been running hundred miles an hour. I didn't do it for this auction. But yesterday I saw there was a uh, extended cab uh, K30 went through for $135,000. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And there was a, a 72 K10 went through for like $85,000, wow. right? So probably I'm guessing what I saw was like five or six trucks went through over $100,000, right? Mm -hmm. And that's five years ago no one was talking no, about mm -mm. that they would not they would not even come close right. to the mm -hmm. top 10 yeah. list yeah. On, yeah. on the sales for that. So your day. point, yes, I like trucks, but also to, you know, I've talked and telling you the story about how you to flip old trucks. I knew if this thing came and went without me sort of figuring out how am I going to be involved here? I know enough about startup world and about this culture and about the economy and what the seller needs, what the buyer needs, where the opportunities are for sponsorship, how to create content in a new world that's a little bit different than these legacy sites, right? They're good, but their audiences are aging out some. Um, and if we're on our screens 10 hours a day, then what mm -hmm. makes sense for that to be there? Mm -hmm. And not the and it for also to be entertainment. And that's where the shooting comes from, right? Yeah. Sort of understanding the economy for one, but also what's in front of us. And, and this podcast is a perfect example, how this content makes sense and how the algorithm works for that. And I think that's really part of the passion too, is we create great stuff and test it and see how it's going to respond. We have that Utah truck has got almost a million views. Incredible. Incredible. Right. And oh, we, wow. I, we didn't know what that was going to happen. We, so again, it's the, the economy and then sort of this new passion or new understanding. And I think we have started to figure out the internet and the algorithm and how to make great content and how to get views and it's sort of eight second movies which kills my soul and i know that it goes too. <laughs> yeah. but there are ways to do it and yeah. i think we're getting close to doing that too and it's even more challenging i'm more excited about doing that because once you learn it you're like oh I can do this. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it, it sounds bit. like Gabe. This, I mean, you, what you described is kind of what we're in the. Exactly. We just started what yeah. two months ago, exactly. mm -hmm. somewhere in that range. Yeah. yeah, and we talk about the same thing. And it, and and you're right. You're excited when you hit a certain plateau. You're like, 
we have a hundred subscribers. Slowly. Holy shit. You know, yeah. and yeah. now you hit, now you hit, you know, 3,500, 4,500, well, whatever it is. Well, for us, especially for Dan and I, we had to unlearn a lot of stuff that we grew up with in being in TV and film for decades, you know, how to shoot, how to light, how to, how to, you know, I mean, vertical video. Hmm. I mean, that was like, dude, death, you know, <laughs> don't ever shoot vertical. Right. But now like. Everything we have to protect is for vertical now, mm. you know? Yeah. I just actually, uh, on Instagram post, before I posted a video that I shot landscape, but I posted, you know, rotated, right? So mm -hmm. you have to actually move your phone. But I put a poll up with my followers and I was like, hey, do you guys mind turning your phone or do you hate it? And it was kind of 50-50. Mm -hmm. And the, the creative in me is like, screw it. I'm putting it up big <laughs> so they can see it. I want people yeah. to see this, you know? Yeah. Sure. But... You know, you gotta you gotta roll with the algorithm, and you gotta find places where you're like, all right, I'm yeah. gonna this is gonna be a creative thing just for me, so I don't care about the algorithm. But then when it comes to some more business stuff, you gotta like kind of yeah. understand that. Well, we're adapting to the market, the economy. You know, uh, we're we want people to view the content because we believe the content to be good. Mm -hmm. But if they're not gonna watch it because it's not formatted the way they want, yeah. well, yeah, what are you doing? So that's exactly what we're doing too. Is in what I call it is sort of how can we be scroll proof mm. and. That's a big part of what we think about when we release this content. Yeah, I would love to release a three-minute documentary sort of Yeti style on this truck, <laughs> but I don't think anyone's going to watch it yeah. right yeah. away. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? But I think the eight-second uh, get me excited before I scroll next is going to work. And yeah. so we've gotten into that. And like I said, it's paying off. It's crazy. And you guys know this as well as we do. It's a lot of testing. And yeah. uh, I, as I've gotten more into how do we – uh, create the community and how do I use my marketing knowledge to do that some of my marketing knowledge works a lot of it doesn't uh, Because it's not traditional. It's you know, it's Zuckerberg's world and how can we mm -hmm. figure it out son? Mm -hmm. And once you sort of accept that mm -hmm. it's kind of like yeah. drowning you're like, yeah. oh, yeah. I got it I'm gonna yeah. drown. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you accept that and just let yourself be with peace with it. It's yeah. better right. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so what I think when we think about how to create great content that grows community and Provides that entertainment. That's what we think about again uh, what I'm seeing coming out of the corporate world and work for PAPS and in the cannabis world, about 70% of your marketing calories go towards uh, content. And that wasn't the way 10 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And there's some people who are resisting that and there are some brands who get it. And I think yeah. that's where we're going. Uh, and so that is a critical part of what we're doing. It's crazy, but you know, that's, that's where people are. And it's, it's a little bit of juxtaposition to have these old classic uh -huh. trucks, but have them on the screen in front of your head. But that's, uh, that's well, why it works. And I think one thing that's making your job a heck of a lot easier is the name. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's got to, it's because it's just so perfect. Yeah. That's all Kyle, man. I mean, yeah. that's, it's got to make things been. easier yep. Yeah, a that, little you, bit. that you chose a very, very good name, something that totally fits the brand and exactly what and, you're and, trying to accomplish. And, and then going back and um, going back to the poll, I voted for vertical <laughs> on, on that one um, uh, because they killed me when I shoot landscape, this <laughs> yeah. and that. But now, you know, there's a there's a final. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Just a side note. Yeah. When we told Helm, you know, to start shooting video, he's like, oh, what? Because I don't what? do video. I do, you know, I and, shoot still. Yeah, and yeah. Dan and I were very, very strict. It was like, don't shoot vertical <laughs> ever. Yeah. And now we're like, hey, we need to start shooting vertical. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, wait, vertical. what? Yeah. Okay. And, and but going back to um, CJ and and um, talking about the name and how great it is, is that I think the basis of all of us too, with with the podcast and what you guys are doing, the authenticity. You strip away everything else. Yeah. We are living it. We are living what yeah. we're trying to share, and you guys are too. You know, so I think that what that's what resonates with me and the people that I follow and I watch. If there's that authenticity threaded in it, embedded it, em embedded into it. I'm going to be a loyal fan. Yeah. I mean, you know, so uh, um, I became a fan of uh, yours, Joe, uh, when, when Dan sent us your account, I was like, Oh cool. He, he does some really cool videos. And then um, hell, I knew Helm latched oh, onto you when man. you started seeing your drawing. Oh right? man. Thanks. Guys. I, <laughs> and I, when you're meet, I want to go out there. I want to, oh, yeah. I want to sketch with you. Well, that's, yeah, well, that, that's like, the thing. So, yeah. so um, I, and you need to capture us. Hey, I'm right here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yell <laughs> sorry. Take it easy. Man. <laughs> Simmer down. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, when uh, you, you were over at the, the tree lounge yeah, coffee, uh, shop, coffee shop which Camarillo. which which i like and i've been teasing helm he's like hey because he's a coffee shop whore he's like yeah. just goes, guys <laughs> yeah. go to every single connoisseur there's <laughs> yeah. two whore. Whore. What is oh, that, dude. You. you're a whore hey hey, hey. beth hey. yeah get get hey. anybody who yeah. puts that much cream and coffee <laughs> not a coffee hey, yeah. yeah i'm learning i'm, learning. Yeah. I'm with you no, yeah exactly I'm with anyways you. you're not a con <laughs> <laughs> anyways, anyways i've been teasing because I've, I've been there a few times with my wife oh cool and uh when you tag in uh or when i 
uh, send it over to him. He's like, oh, we got to go to that tree lounge coffee place. No, I, I, I connect. And then the, he awesome. posted the thing about the car, the you guys are doing a cars and coffee together. Yeah. Yeah. The, so they uh, they came up with the idea. So I go in there almost every day in the morning before like I, I drop my kids off and then I stop over there and I draw for a little bit, so maybe do awesome. a couple of emails or whatever. And then and then I start the business day. But um, I draw mainly, you know, cars, trucks oh, and bikes and it. stuff. And they saw that and we've just become friends over time. And um, they pitched the idea of doing a little car meet thing and cars and coffee. And so I was like, dude, I'll help. I'll... So I drew like a Lamborghini Countach and did the whole like oh, little cool. poster layout thing. Oh, and yeah. and uh, so now we're promoting and I got a couple of buddies coming, um, bringing some cool cars and cool trucks and pre-runners and kind of a mix of vehicles and yeah. stuff. But... Which I mean, I to be honest with you, that was surprised me because I never thought, granted, I'm, I'm I'm being judgmental, but I never thought they that to pit particular business would be interested in cars right yeah in general but apparently they are yeah so the son matthew who runs it he's a car guy and so and we always talk cars when i'm ordering coffee you know yeah. so then of course it's now every single time we see each other he's telling yeah. me what he's doing on his car or I, I ride my bikes there sometimes so yeah it just became a thing and i'm like dude i'll, I'll help you out you know and uh so it's on the 24th sunday this month nice. and it's probably going to be you know kind of small and cool but uh There'll be a couple of live painters going oh, on. Nice. There's some music, awesome. food truck, and you know. And, and cool where vibes. is it again? Uh, it's Tree Lounge Coffee in Ventura. On uh, I'm sorry, in Camarillo on Ventura Boulevard. In so downtown, old, old town, yeah, old town. Okay, yeah. old town. Okay. And I love nice. I love car guys who ride a bike every now yeah. and then. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I love them, man. With, with with you loving cars and motorcycles, I've heard I have a lot of friends that ride motorcycles and they also own classic cars. Mm -hmm. They say that four wheels move you, yeah. but two wheels move your soul. Mm. Can you agree to that? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> when you're saying that, I, I just did a ride um, just from my house. So my bikes are kind of like old dad bikes. They keep me not too dangerous, you know, 250s and 350s. So I'm <laughs> I'm able to get my rocks off, but it's not too yeah. crazy. But I go, I go ride out. Uh, <laughs> Cal State University Channel Islands. Oh, so there's all the mountains out there, and there's yeah. some trails out there. That's you, where you guys are trying to figure where is it? <laughs> I know yeah. it's local. Is that where it's scary dairy? Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. Right there, dude. Oh, man. All the trails out there. So I That's try to crazy. I try to keep it a little low pro, but um I I love going out there and even through COVID, I mean my wife would come home from work. I'm working from home. I have my two kids home from school, and she'd get home and she's like, Hey, you need to get on a bike oh, and get out nice. of here. Oh. You know? So I'd go for a ride and clear my head and just uh but the other night. I was riding back. It was, it was sun out. I did a little shoot with me and my bike, and I'm coming back, and it's dark. And then I get a glimpse right by the old state hospital out there of the moon popping out, and it was a full moon, like oh, this last weekend. And it just hit me, and I just had this moment of like, this is it. This is the best feeling in the world. I, I'm so present, and you know, I'm on this bike. You're tunnel focus. You're just mm -hmm. like, you're not thinking about bills or projects or anything. You're just in the moment. Yeah. And then to have that moonlight splashing, I stopped, turned the bike off, and I just stood like ten feet away and just just stared at my bike in the moon and just took it in and like, yeah. I mean, because that's what it's all about. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Did you have the uh, Micron pens in your pocket? <laughs> no, I did. Because I did. <laughs> I did last night. I had my my Pentel. Few yeah, there you go. Pens. You sleep with pens in your pocket? <laughs> oh, dude, I'm a pen geek. <laughs> no, man. I Helm, what is your pen ride? Uh, my pen ride. Remember pocket ride? pen ride oh yeah this well, is your pocket ride well right? not it's not in my pocket it's in my bag right ah, now, okay oh, so bag right. but when i saw joe's <laughs> when i saw your feed number one the microns and what you're yeah, doing yeah. i said yeah. oh i need and after dan um uh shared your feed i said i need to follow him and what's great is that you know um uh, one of my good friends and i helped brand his company um is marco from uh, owner of tlg oh yeah yeah marco, and so when you a... did your your painting the painting you oh, rendered it i was yeah. like that yeah. is awesome and yeah. how small this community this is, is like your third or fourth plug for marco so we should... hey it's not my fault he knows everybody <laughs> hey, hey don't Dude. yell at me i'm right here. Oh, yeah. don't yell at me man yeah you know? marco's a legend it's funny him and i have never actually shook hands you but we've we've had a lot of like kind of oh, good <laughs> conversations on instagram you know, it's like yeah. Yeah. it's like the LinkedIn yeah. man. Well, I asked online him to come on. He, he, he wants to come on. And yeah, we got to let online, him know. Sure. Yeah, yeah, he's a great guy, and like the stuff he does is oh, it's amazing. Top of the amazing. line work. You know, is yeah. all your work in pen? Or you said you use oils. You do use different. Yeah, I mean, these days it's a lot of just you know. I only got a little window of time <laughs> to create, so it's just uh, I bring a sketchbook and a, a bag of pens basically, and do ink drawings and stuff. But yeah, I've painted and you know oils and acrylics and watercolors and stuff and i went through a phase where i was doing like uh dog portraits for people and it was <laughs> cool. fun you know it was a challenge and you make a little side cash and uh but yeah these days in the last like year or so it's just been all like 
car bike stuff and dog it, portraits and with pickup trucks no yeah. no yeah. no if you did um illustrations of these owners of the yeah. cars yeah. like watercolor Ooh, or just that'd be cool. and to yes. put it with yes. the the, mm. the paperwork Package. the merch mm. dude so what you do is, yeah, you have the owner stand with their truck and some yep. and then you draw it out. Yeah, and, ooh, yeah. these are keepsakes. Cool. Five by seven, sure. eight by ten. Wh just, Whistler's yeah. mother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like I to mean, call this one springtime in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd buy a truck just to pose next to it, so you would. Sketch it. <laughs> well, here's I don't the care guy. Favor the oh, <laughs> so yeah. you guys have, uh, you guys are doing a launch in J June. Yeah, June. So uh, as we talked about earlier, we had been building eyeballs, right, um, and trying to turn, figure out when to turn this thing on. And I consulted with different auction companies, like, you know, what's the perfect database to have of people, and how do you turn this thing on? And we're getting close to that number. At the same time, I think some of the fun stuff we're doing with content is helping accelerate that some. So at June, we are looking for our first live auction. Uh, that'll be around a Father's Day promotion as well. Uh, it will be a themed promotion. It will be a curated uh, package, and it'll be limited lots. And we'll tease that, and we'll build content leading up to it as well. So we're super excited about that. And again, we're putting together what those theme showcases look like throughout the year. And our plan would be to go out and talk to um, like-minded brands that would support that content creation. And again, that would offset sort of the cost, and that's sort of the the way the truck road runs. So, so if people want to learn more about what you guys are doing and get involved in this, how? How do they find you? How do they reach you? Yeah, absolutely. So we have our biggest following on Instagram. So if you go to Truck Rodeo on Instagram right now, you'll see everything we list. You can also go to truckrodeo.com, which we have uh, trucks there as well, and a little more background on the company. Um, and then Joe? Is it, uh, I'm sorry, is, it, is the auction going to be through your website? Yes, so the auction will be oh, okay. through truckrodeo.com. Okay. So no physical spot as well. It's not a tandem. Yeah, exactly. So no, no brick and mortar. Okay. Uh, and yeah, so we have been building the back end of this uh, auction site as well and putting all this stuff in. I've learned a whole lot about that world in the last 18 months or so. Uh, Joe, where can they find you? Uh, yeah, Joseph Kennelty uh, on Instagram. That's where my main stuff is. Um, I just post all my, you know, drawings and photos. You guys got to check out Joe's Instagram. He's got cool stuff totally. on there. And then you go to Truck Rodeo, and they just have kick-ass trucks. I, I, Thanks, man. You, you guys have rekindled my Instagram uh, <laughs> thing because I was kind of ignoring Instagram. And yeah, now, I know. We were trying Gabe, to Gabe was like, get on Instagram. Yeah. Well, I That's keep, where it's I, happening. I was like, hello, I've invited you for every collaboration that we've done, and it, you've been accepted one. <laughs> <laughs> I just ignore Instagram. What can I say? Dan's active now. I love it. Yeah, we need girl. every follower, Dan. Come on. Yeah. And then Dan calls me and goes, God, Gabe keeps harassing me. <laughs> I know exactly what he He's wants. badgering me. <laughs> me badgering. I'm the, what the social media czar. For <laughs> yeah, that's the czar. Yeah, that's right. Social media czar. All right. Any more questions for the guys? Are we, is that good? I, and we covered a lot of ground. Yeah. Was, was there anything we didn't cover that you guys think you wanted to cover? I'm good. <laughs> you want to talk about your pens more? No. <laughs> I, know, I, know. I do. We can talk pens. Yeah, like, I'm going to talk about offline. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious if there's one truck that you would share with the public that's kind of a sleeper truck mm. that somebody may have in their yard and think, uh, oh. and you think, keep this or sell it and there's, get really good. Well, there, be. there's one. We were just talking about the one that's nearby, actually, that sleeper truck, right? That step side Ford. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's hear about so, it, guys. I, 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 I don't know. Or are you question. giving up the secrets? No, no, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I, let, me, let me make sure I'm understanding your question. Is there a sleeper car out? Is there a sleeper truck that I would recommend to be sort of the, Keep what your eye on this? And, yeah, yeah, for sure. There's a lot of. So I think interna international trucks are going to start, start to pop here. Oh, they're good looking mm. trucks. They're good looking trucks. You're that, like a 50s era? Uh, yeah, Late 50s? 50s yeah, 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 those so are nice and rounded. Well. And super, super nice. IHCs, right? Yeah. That's what people call them? Yeah, right. IHCs. Yeah, and then you see 1210s as well, so the 72s, uh, but international harvester made trucks as well as the Scout. So those are starting to trend. They're really boxy and they're super, super sexy. I also think you're going to start to see more Dodges. So, mm -hmm. you know, Dodges uh, was less popular in the mm -hmm. 70s. Uh, those old bodies these are cool step sides. You've heard the old Dodge Warlock uh, trucks. So those are ones to watch as well. Uh, but no, that's a great, great question. But what we're going to say is there is a, I think it's a 78 Ford F-150 step side. Yep near Ventura mm -hmm. uh, that we'll give you the link on. It is on Truck Rodeo. We're going to repost that, but that's a that's a hot car that uh, a collector has here, and it would be 
a good addition to someone's collection. Wow. Okay. What's what's the dollar yeah, right. amount, Kyle? What's so I think the he's amount? in mid-20s right now, so we think wow. he's around 25, 26. Okay, so it's and not outrageous. It's not outrageous, exactly. This is where truck already wants to be, right? Yeah. The $25,000 truck, I don't have to worry about. It'll run when I turn, uh, turn the key, and not going to make my garage smell like gas. What yeah. color is it? It's brown. Okay, nice. and then can you see the road underneath? Is there no, there, no, no, <laughs> Fred Flintstone. That's my garage. Uh, no, this one is uh, it's super nice. I think it has a That's roll clear. bar as well, uh, and it's it's somewhat less desirable because it's a, a flare side or step side, but they're starting to come uh, into popularity a little, little bit. Mm. So yeah, uh, and I love I love geeking out on like you know what next is coming, yeah, exactly. and that yeah. sort of thing, right? Yeah, for sure. So does that mean we're getting one? Not yet. Mm. We'll send it over for a test drive this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does it have a big steering wheel? It does. There you go. You're in luck. See? And a Charlie Crockett Missed final tape. approval right there. <laughs> Maybe you can get the Mercedes steering wheel into that truck, though. I, I, I think you could. The big Mercedes Shape. wheels. Yeah. yeah. Got, yes. got a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Start with the steering wheel. All right. Kyle, Joe, thank you so much. And thank you for coming out, flying all the way out to yeah. Steve's. That's, that's impressive. No we, problem. Uh, thank you. We are very, very happy to have both of you on. Thanks for having us. Open invitation anytime. Come back. You bet. Thank all you right. very much. Nice. We have a cot in the back. You can sleep. I'm, I'm on the red eye in a couple hours. Okay. So, all, right. Yeah. all right. And thank you for watching. Don't forget, we've got our website. Go there. We have our tip line page. You can join us here in the studio. Maybe we'll go to you, depending on where you are. Maybe we'll drive a truck to get there. Hey. Okay. Oh, yeah. Put all the shit in the back. Yeehaw. Yeah. And we'll drive out and we'll, we'll interview you. All right. Don't forget, uh, like, follow, subscribe. We also have our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we thank you. And we'll see you west of Tulsa.